guys welcome back to my channel today's video is from fight for truth it says uh, talker carlson is changing mm. let's check it out guys Hey guys, Colin here, and welcome back to Fight for Truth, the channel where we bring you Christian commentary about the things that matter. In today's video, we're going to be talking about Tucker Carlson. Recently, Tucker has been saying some things that I think all Christians need to be aware of. You see, most people know him as merely a conservative TV host who has a tendency of being controversial. But in this video, I'm going to show you that Tucker Carlson is changing. Something's going on here, and we need to find out what it is. So let's get right into it. Check out this clip of Tucker being interviewed at a Blaze Media Summit. Watch this. Well, I'm clinging to the hope that elections still matter. I, I really want to believe that because I'm, I'm American in a very fundamental way. And so I believe in, in, the, in the actual mechanics of democracy, like the people should rule, you know. Um, so, uh, but leaving aside even elections, I think it's clearly a pivot point in history. And I don't think the issues that we debate and really are in some ways distractions are the core issues mm. at all. I mean, it really, there are forces, unseen forces acting on people. Now, I want you guys to understand how monumental that statement is. This is Tucker Carlson, a man who has spent virtually his entire career as a political commentator, deeply involved with our electoral system. And yet here he is saying in front of thousands of people that the so-called election issues we've been debating all this time are distractions from the real issues we're facing. And more than this, Tucker says that there are, quote, unseen forces acting upon people behind the scenes. This tells me that he's starting to get it. He's starting to understand what this has all been about. But let's listen to Tucker explain how he's been coming to these conclusions and really what changed his mind. Watch this. <laughs> and I thought, well, I'm just going to read the Bible. And no, I'm not going to do a Bible study. I'm a Protestant, so I feel like I have a right to kind of read it myself. And I know, I'm sorry, I feel that way. <laughs> and, uh, and so I've been reading it since February, and I'm like about halfway done. And, and I haven't talked to anyone about it, and I haven't been in it, just been myself reading it. And, and I've all kind of, it's like the most interesting thing I think I've ever done, actually. Mm. It's unbelievable. The amount of drama in those books <laughs> that has been hidden from me as a regular churchgoer in the Episcopal Church. Like, wait, why didn't you never mention this? This is like unbelievable. <laughs> what? So what changed Tucker's mind on these things? Scripture. Actually reading the Word of God and believing what it says. Imagine that. The Word of God is living and active, powerful and effective. Hebrews 4.12. And this speech from Tucker is just one of millions of practical examples that we could cite in favor of this point. But also, notice that Tucker says there's a lot of biblical text that he was totally unaware of, despite being around Christianity for his whole life. Now, to be fair, part of this is because the Bible is a big book, and it's hard to be intimately familiar with all of it. But another reason for this is that many modern churches don't really preach the Word anymore. And that's terribly sad. Tucker is reading the, the Bible, and he's saying to himself what many of us have been saying for years when we discover an often neglected scripture. Why is nobody talking about this? How did I not know this? You see, despite the fact that the Bible tells pastors to teach the word faithfully, 1 Timothy 4.13, most churches these days are offering a short, weekly, self-help, motivational TED Talk instead of robust teaching about the Word of God, and it really shows. This is why it's so important to actually read the Word, as Tucker is saying here. And it's equally important to join a church that cares more about being biblical and truthful than about being entertaining. Now, in this next clip, Tucker's perspective really starts to take shape, and you're going to want to hear it. Watch this. But the two things I have come away with after reading the entire New Testament, and I'm up to Deuteronomy in the Old Testament, it's like maybe the point is that God takes people who are not perfect people, not only not perfect people, like they're so imperfect again, mm. I don't think I can have dinner with them, and uses them for these grander purposes. That's the first thing I notice. The second thing I notice is that people, while they have free will, of course, and they can make decisions and they live with the consequences of those decisions, they're not really in charge of the arc of history at all. Mm. They are being acted upon a lot. Amen. Okay? And I never really appreciated that because I'm American. And so I grew up with this feeling that we're the sum total of our choices. And, well, that's not what I'm reading at all. Mm. Yeah, people's choices matter. You need to do certain things and not do other things. On the other hand, you are not in charge. You are being acted upon 
by a world you can't see. And that, by the way, is consistent with my life experience. Now, this is a tremendously important point. Please pay attention. In fact, this might be the most important point he makes. We think often pridefully in our lives, especially in the political realm, that we are masters of our own universe, as it were. That if we just had better content, better platforms, better arguments, better community organizing, etc., that we could create the world in the way we want it. But Tucker is saying the exact opposite. He's saying that yes, our choices matter, and they will affect the world around us, of course. And yet, we are still not in control fundamentally. God is. See Psalm 115, verse 3. This is huge. Here we have literally one of the most famous political figures in the United States talking about the importance of reading your Bible and the truth of God's sovereignty. It's incredible. This is a big moment, and I don't want us to miss it as Christians. And even more than this, let's listen to Tucker take his point even further. Watch this. I feel like it's really important to approach politics with that in mind. Like, a lot of these issues are symbols of this much larger battle. So what's the end game here? Well, according to Tucker, we need to approach politics with these things in mind, because they're just, quote, symbols of a larger battle that's taking place. I think he's talking, to a certain extent, about spiritual warfare. As Christians, we know that we don't battle flesh and blood fundamentally. At the deepest level, we battle spiritual forces that affect the physical world. See Ephesians 6.12. Politics is downstream from theology. It always has been. Your political activity is governed by what you believe about God and his revelation to man. And there are two mistakes that people make when reacting to this fundamental truth. First, some will say that politics doesn't matter because only theology matters. But that's not true. Because as we've covered, theology has huge practical effects on the political world. And therefore, political action is very important. Second, some will say that politics matters far more than theology because theology is not practical enough. It's too pie in the sky, too ethereal. This idea is also deeply flawed. As Tucker has been saying, the political world will always be affected by the unseen spiritual forces behind the scenes. So the truth is this, we need both political and religious ideals to be rooted in scripture if we are going to have a good society in the eyes of God. And what then is the overall solution to our current situation in the opinion of Tucker? Well, the answer to that can be found in a recent speech that he gave to the Heritage Foundation earlier this year. Watch this. I'm, I'm just noting what's super obvious. Like those of us who are in our mid fifties are caught in the past in the way that we think about this. One side's like, no, no, you know, I've got this idea and we've got this idea and let's have a debate about our ideas. They don't want a debate. Those ideas won't produce outcomes that any rational person would want under any circumstances. Those are manifestations of some larger force acting upon us. It's just so obvious. It's completely obvious. And I think two things. One, we should say that and stop engaging in these totally fraudulent debates where we are using the terms that we used in 1991 when I started at Heritage as if maybe, you know, I could just win the debate if I marshaled more facts. I've tried that, doesn't work. And two, maybe we should all take just like 10 minutes a day to say a prayer about it. I'm serious, like why not? So the solution to this is twofold. First, Stop thinking that it all comes down to debating the issues or presenting all the facts. Stop thinking that if you just presented all the facts in a clear, rational way, then we could solve the deepest problems that we have in the culture war. As Tucker says here, he's tried putting all the emphasis on having the facts, and it rarely works, if ever. Because these people we're up against don't care about facts. They care about worshiping themselves. In other words, this isn't a political persuasion. Radical leftism is a religion. In fact, it's a false religion. If you don't believe me, try debating the facts with an advocate of unaliving babies in the womb. Life begins at conception, you might say, when a new and unique genetic code is created. And you'd be correct. That's a fact. But guess how many people on the other side care? Virtually no one because they want to be God. They want to recreate the world in their image and be the arbiters of what is life and what is not. I want to take this life away and there's nothing you can do to stop me. It's my right because I said so. That's what they'll say. Or try debating the facts with someone who's in favor of the trans agenda. There are only two sexes, two genders, male and female. This too is an undeniable fact, both biblically and scientifically. See Genesis 127. 
But again, they don't care. If I want to be a woman, they say, then I can be a woman because I identify that way, and it's my right because I said so. Do you see the circular reasoning being employed in both these situations? It's not a debate about the facts. It never has been. You need to get that out of your mind. This is fundamentally one religion that is true and another religion that is false. Don't let anyone fool you into thinking otherwise. And the sooner we figure this out as Christians, the more clear our thinking will be on these topics. And of course, lastly, Tucker encourages the audience to pray. In other words, acknowledge God's sovereignty and power and trust him fully. See Psalm 910. So here's the point. Tucker is making a lot more sense than most people, even professing Christians. And frankly, the majority of modern pastors in this country are afraid to touch topics like this, either sitting on the fence or ignoring the issues entirely. And here we have Tucker Carlson, a political TV host, speaking the truth about what's really going on. So please, pray for Tucker Carlson and anyone else mentioned in the video. And pray for this channel. As always, check out the teaching ministries and church networks linked in the description. And by God's grace, let's move forward joyfully, holding to the truth of God's word. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, hit the bell, and subscribe to our Rumble channel, link in description. And before you go, take a look at this list here. These are the people who make all of our free content possible with their monthly support. Today's highlighted channel supporter is Robin D. If you would like this channel to do more research, make more videos, and reach more people, please hit the link in the description and join the Truth Army today. And until next time, fight for truth. Thank you, and God bless. Yes, I totally enjoyed watching this. One thing I, 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 I will say that which is something I've been saying if you are an OG here, when it comes to Christianity, you need to know God for yourself. No matter how often you go to church, but you are not making an effort to read the Bible for yourself and know God for yourself. Forget it. You always miss it. You heard what uh, Mr. Tucker Carlson said that why have this been hidden from him? It's because he has, he has not gone after it for himself. So it, let's let's just say, for example, you go to church. Let's say weekly, you go to church on Sundays. Come on, guys, let's be real. How much can you learn just one day? In a week? And we know how big the Bible is. Like there's so much the Bible uncovers when you get, get to read it. And the thing about the Bible, like the more you read it, like let's say for instance, the more you read a particular verse, you read a particular verse today. The next minute you read it, it will make a whole different meaning for you. That's one secret about the Bible. So you need to know God for yourself. And I love the fact that He has taken upon Himself. Imagine Tucker Carlson. I, guys, something is happening in the world and not just to Mr. Tucker Carlson. And it's important that we begin to align ourselves with the right forces because times are changing and it's going to get harder and harder. And if you're not aligned with the right forces, so you're not on the right lane, it's going to get tougher for you. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and take care of yourself. Bye guys.